SonicState.com. Hi, I'm Peter Grenader from, uh, welcome you from the noise bug annex of the 2009 Winter NAM show in Anaheim, California. And uh, this is like, I always mention this every year, the guys at Sonic State, this is like the fifth year we've been doing this tonight. It's always a blast. Uh, it's nice seeing you guys and I really appreciate uh, the opportunity. Uh, in April of last year, we moved our operation facility to Pomona. And with it, our, our headcount went up about five times and our uh, throughput, a 230% increase. So it's, it's been tough and uh, in our spare time, right, we released seven new products uh, all at the same time, which is something I'll never do again, but we made it through it. And it's gotten us ready for something that personally I've always been waiting for, is system level uh, integration. And I want to show you some of that now. We also have a special guest, Phil Gallo, who is the creator of the Model 30, which has been operational to show. Uh, he's going to run it through its, its paces. So let me show you first um, some of the products. This is the newest one. Scan down here if you can. This is the Model 2. Now you guys all know what a cod piece is. This is a cod holder. Okay, it's not funny. <laughs> I thought I'd get a big laugh, but there's a dead audience here. But in the system level, this is the first one. Right here, uh, it's the ear performance system, it's two rows of 102 HP, a little bit wider than what the other guys are doing, and it was designed specifically for this module complement, okay? We've got two of the Model 15 oscillators, a wave splicer, a four-channel mixer, uh, three filters actually, the 11, 12, and the 13, one of the new joysticks, which I'm going to be going into a lot more detail in a second, uh, headphone pre, the Mini Milton sequencer, our active mult, Without listing the whole thing, it's on the website, and I think what this is is a uh, it eclipses the standard complement of function that was defined some 40 years ago for a beginner system. Okay, the uh, EMS uh, EMLs theory of uh, two uh, three oscillators and LFO and a VCA and envelope generator, blah blah blah, and some sort of um, human interface like a joystick or a keyboard. So that is that. Um, but along those lines, you know, one of the beautiful things about modular, the, I don't know, sonic erector set, which is modular anyway, if you will, it affords expandability, and some people don't want us to tell them what they need to make their music. And, but there's been a rub with that, in that there's an expense involved by adding rows of modules. Once you fill one up, you have to power it off of something, and these have been quite expensive, I, to my standards, like 500 bucks. And to that, we released uh, this thing called the Ringer. I think you see where you get the name, especially if you have to have you know, really long, fat, rectangular fingers. <laughs> but it is an open frame, unpowered mounting system, which is rack width, and we're going to sell it as a kit, and it's not going to be a problem. It makes IKEA look difficult. It's like eight screws, and it runs off an external power supply which is going to be the same power supply unit we use for all of our systems, including the, the performance system. All right, we're going to shoot, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say it, but what we're going to try to do is um, introduce a very affordable means to get something that should be rudimentary covered so it's not such a great expense, and you can spend that money and invest in things that you might, you might prefer to make your art, all right? So, the power supply system uh, it's my wisdom that you stick to what you're good at and you stay away from what you're not good at. And I don't believe that uh, power distribution, which is so critical to the operation of audio, I should attempt. So we're using two SL power, formerly Condor power, switching power supplies, which are newly released and designed specifically for audio applications. We're keeping it out of the box. It's with um, you know, a, a power uh, umbilical cord it keep, takes care of all any possibility of, of radiation. We have to keep it in a metal box anyway, so there's the Faraday cage you need for that sort of protection. But the beauty of it is it's about three and a half amps and very, very efficient. And three and a half amps might power up to five of these, okay? So you can get one of these units and one power supply and you have five rows at an affordable you know, alternative. So that's, that's kind of cool, all right? But, this is great for guys to stay in the studio, but it really is not that functional for a working musician or a touring musician. And we have reconstituted 
the uh, case that which was introduced like three years ago for uh, Alessandro Cortini of Nine Inch Nails. This is uh, unit one. They'll be seriously in production in about 12 weeks time. And we've put some innovation in it. You know, when you look at things the second time, the third time, you're able to think of things maybe to do differently. And uh, this is three rows of 120 H, 128 HP, excuse me. And we've got these panel strips, they're 18 inches long on the top and the bottom. When you purchase this unit, it will come like this, it will be blank. But we're going to sell modules for this application, one with a little light, multiples, sends, receives, possibly a mini to CV. So we're going to have options, and the issue isn't that we're trying to get you aftermarket sales, we're trying to keep the investment of moving in this system as affordable as possible. Come down here on the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see three toggle switches with three LEDs. Every other power connector on the bus is switched offline by this, what we call power saver, okay? You always want to keep your oscillators live because they have the temperature stabilized, your filters possibly, but there's a lot of modules that don't require that, and why should you keep them alive if you're not using them in the patch? And if, if there's any way you could get down here, I potentially bring this power supply, you can see uh, about an amp on the positive rail, but when I turn the power savers off, we drop almost half percent, I'm half of our current intake, and I think that's a really good thing. So uh, that's a feature that's going to be standing with this unit. And again, there's a, an external supply, which is really cool, because in the event, we don't know what you're going to put in these things, and if our um, power is not adequate for your needs, you can always interface another one, okay? So those are the cases. And let's move on to some of the modules we're showing here. First, uh, in production now is the, the vector plot of the Model 32. This is actually a four quadrant um, voltage controller. And let me just walk through this, and we're going to have see one or hear one in action, but I just want to get one without the, the wires all over so it's a little bit clearer. You have an X and a Y, two quadrants, and a preset maximum voltage level. With the ability to have an X and a Y independent output, with that ability, we're right now at about 92% of all the joystick controllers ever been made, okay? We have added to that a manual trigger, much like EMS. We're now at, what, 95% of all of them have ever been made. We also allow for external inputs into all four quadrants, and they can be AC, they can be DC, and we have a mixed output. So you could actually use this to mix four different audio tracks in real time. That's, there's a, I know Bruce Duncan at ModCam has something like that, so let's, let's be optimistic and say now our thing can do what every other joystick can do. But let's continue, there's a lot more controls. You can have this set for either positive operation, so this would be ground, and this would be the preset voltage, or it can be bipolar. So somewhere around the mid, you're at ground, and here's negative voltage and positive voltage, conversely with this axis, and it comes in very handy for things like panning. When I said loosely, somewhere around here at ground, it depends on the voltage you've dialed in, but you know, uh, I think it's very functional still. Okay, so another function are the kinetic gates, and what the heck is that? We have two internal envelope followers that actually sense velocity and will give you a gate signal when you move it. Now, why is that important? Let me show you one here with a patch live. If you want to come down here, and you can see, that I've got this wicked little thing, the typical Peter Grenada sound actually, but it's only happening when I move the joystick. So anyone could, I think, uh, design a patch to do this, but I do it with internally, okay? We have four different, um, we can, let's go back here to this guy. We have four different decoded signals. We have the Y axis, the X axis, the X and Y axis, and then I just throw this combination when this button, the Z axis, has to be down for this signal to go live. So you have four different ways to decode uh, velocity data, and that's the Model 32. So uh, we'll get to the, um, the 21C Mini Milton in one second, but I'd like to introduce uh, Phil Gallo, who is um, the creator and the, the, the cook behind the uh, Mo Model 32, I mean the Model 30, uh, triple DC, uh, digital VCO subsystem. If, if any of you saw the video we went, did for Analog Haven, uh, Analog Suicide last year, excuse me, I said, 
Okay, tomorrow I'm going to show this module, uh, but I can't talk about it now. Well, we, that was this module, and we elected not to show it, but here, now it's this time. Um, so without any further uh, interruption, I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of Phil Gallo.